Um, Dane Delpaw's checked in, and he's uh, he's listening down in Georgia. All right, so we're starting to make uh, moves into the south. Lanfear will have the basketball to start the second half. Rose over to Austin. Starters on the floor for the Railers. Underneath, Wallace kicks it back on top to Rose. Yeah, now they've moved Austin right in the middle, and that's where he hurt us in game one. Rose down the middle. That's Austin a charge. Oh. Gavin steps in and takes the charge. You know, and just one of those, Jeff, will give that offensive guy uh, remembrance of that. It just takes one charge, and, it, and then you remember, you go in there, you better watch out because another guy's going to take a charge, so I've either got to pull up or I've got to pass it, or I just decide not to not to drive it into the middle of the lane. So good job defensively by the Railers. Gavin stepped in the way, kept it from uh, Rose getting to the basket on the, the charging foul. Max into the front court, gets a screen from Gavin, hands over to Hersham. Tyler picks up his dribble now, hands to Joey. Yeah, now Austin guarding Joey. They took him off of uh, off of Gavin, and now he's going to guard Block. So uh, at some point, Gavin, I would think, would have a height advantage on somebody. Max looks to make a move, hands to Gavin. Gavin getting bumped around the top of the key. Joey pull up from 15 off the side of the rim. No good. Gavin tried to get the rebound. Gavin yeah. last touched it. It'll head back to Lanfear. Yeah, good job by Gavin and a nice, not a bad shot by Joey. Pull up dribble uh, off a dribble from about the free throw line. Uh, just couldn't get it to fall. Lanfear quickly into the front court. Bishop goes down. Contact with Bilby, no call. But Bishop gets the layup to go down. Quickly ahead, Max finds Joey. Joey over to Gavin. Gavin down the lane, getting bumped, goes up strong off the Get glass. It. it wouldn't go down, but Gavin will be back where uh, he's been most of the night. He'll be at the free throw line. Yeah, and a great job just to show uh, how much stronger Gavin's gotten here in the last couple of years where he can uh, he can get into that lane now and uh, and take the contact and still have a chance to get it up on the board. Gavin with the free throw. Free throw on the way, up and good. Thirty-seven twenty-three, six forty-three left. Gavin second one, got it again. 38-23, 6.39 to go. Trailers back up by 15. They find it over to Bishop on this side. Bishop tries to dump it down for Austin. Pass is too high, couldn't corral it. Tipped away into the hands of Gavin Block. Max Cook quickly into the front court. Finds Bobby underneath for nice. the layup. Oh, man. Didn't miss it. Uh, Great pass two by Max, too. Right there. Did everything but get the basket. Bishop looks to go around the uh, Get it, boy. baseline. Tipped around into the hands of the Railers again. Max again into the front court. Gavin on the right wing. Drives in the lane. 15 foot wow. is good. And he got undercut by another uh, defender from the Lions. But what a tough pull up. Two dribble pull up to his left hand. Right at the free throw line. Uh, huge basket. 40-23. Into Austin at the free throw line. Boy, Lampier can't right hang on to the ball, Jeff. Tipped away again. Three straight turnovers by the Lions. Cook, Bulby, revert. No, Hanson nice. Gavin gets the basket. What a pass. pass. You better call a timeout, Coach. What a great pass by Everett Bulby. He missed the layup in the, in the first uh, or the possession before. That time, Gavin cut right to the hoop, and what a handoff. Just great unselfish basketball by the Railers. 42-23, Railer lead is 19. 5.20 to go. Underneath again, Alexander comes out with it. Hands to Bishop. Bishop over to Alexander, top of the key. He's going to shoot that. Nope. Well, he wants to. And then Joey's going to be whistled for the hand check foul. Oh, high. man, that's uh, that was a cheap one out. Joey playing great defense on Bishop. Bishop making all the all the moves, the crossovers, and everything else. And uh, I'll tell you what, number three didn't flinch one bit. He stood right in front of him. And uh, great job by Joey. This Railer team has uh, had a great start to the Railer or to the uh, third quarter. 42-23, 5, 10 to go. Railers up by 19. Lamprey will inbound in the near sideline. They get it to Tribbett. Double team of Cook and Ebler are waiting. Instead, they kick it over left side now to Austin. Thames in the contest for Lanfear. Try to dump it in again, and it's tipped away by the Railers. Ebler with a hand on it. Gavin in the corner to Will Cook. Railers will set up. Max, top of the key, thought about taking the three. Cook hands over to his brother Max. 4.40 to go, third quarter. 
Railers up 42-23. Max down the lane, it opens up, hands to Bobby the reverse. This nice. time it's good. Yeah, that time he got by Austin. Austin went for the steal, and a great job by Max to curl in that dribble around. Found Bowlby underneath. He wasn't, he wasn't going to miss that reverse layup. Railers have run off eight in a row to get up by 21, 44, 23. Thames will try a three and connect. Yeah, a kid that uh, hasn't shown a lot as far as the first couple, or at least the game before when we played him, and, and nothing tonight, but he steps up and drains a big basket for Lanfear. 44, 26, approaching the halfway mark of the third. Ball loose, picked up by Max. Max backs the dribble to the timeline. Looks to make a spin move against Thames. Now right side to Cook. Yeah, don't be too uh, too anxious here, Railers. Work some clock, handle the basketball, and, and get a layup. Cook dribbles now over to Max. Underneath to Gavin with a nice catch. Goes up strong. Contact, no call. Heading the other way is Lanfear. Wallace comes up with it. Coach Alexander wanting a call on that last one. 3.30 to go. Wallace in the lane, little floater over the front of the rim. Won't Good go job, down. Peyton. Peyton Ebelair, the littlest guy out there with the biggest rebound of the night. And Ebelair ahead quickly now to Gavin. Gavin, the lane opens up. He'll take it in. Nice. That's a contact. And he went down hard. And he's, uh, oh, he, he's, uh, he's tough as nails, boy. We've seen him fall down a lot uh, and take some big bangs that his, uh, the Railer fans are, or the, the rest of the Railers are trying to help him get up. And he's, he's hobbling a little bit, so. We'll see if Gavin can walk this off, but uh, what a great take by, I, again, Jeff, uh, I, I think the difference in this Railer team has been since we saw that uh, Lanfear game is, is we've continued and continued to go to the hoop. We're not settling. We're starting to transition a little more, um, and it just added more weapons and more openings uh, for this Railer offense. Gavin already with 21 on the night. You don't think he's got a 30 in him, do you? Likes Lanfear, doesn't he? Oh, he does. We got another uh, Franklin, Tennessee cover. That must be like the vacation spot for uh, Railer fans. We've got a couple from Franklin, Tennessee on a uh, great evening of basketball here at Roy S. Anderson. Railers up 44-26. Gavin free throw good. Will Cook will uh, check out. Joey Olden back in. And it looks like Adam's going to be at the bench. He's probably going to replace Gavin, give him a little rest through the end of the third quarter. You yeah, I, I think so, just to see how he's uh, running and maybe maybe get that thing going back in the locker room, get that ankle loose if that's what it was. It looked like he might have twisted his ankle or some part of his knee. But uh, a well-deserved break there for, uh, for Gavin. Uh, well, he's really, really, really become uh, a leader on this team uh, from, from every point. 46-26, the Railer lead is at 20. 3.23 to go in the third quarter. And we say that with a cautionary tone of this Lanfear team can put points up in a hurry. Well, again, and Austin's on the bench, you know. I, I just not uh, understanding why uh, why your best player is going to be sitting on the, uh, on the pine. Got to watch the 10 count. Alexander just does break it. And there's a double team from Ebelair and Olden. Nice catch by Milliken to save the possession for Lanfear. Alexander gets a screen from Thames. Bishop the lefty. Works on the far sideline. Thames put the ball down on four. Looked like he may have walked. Ball loose and then it goes right between the legs of Milliken. And when he touches, it'll wow. be over and back. That Railer defense just feisty right now. Uh, you saw Ebelair and Olden all over the basketball as Gavin's getting a check back in. Got that, uh, got that ankle fixed up real quick, but that, that Railer defense. You get in the middle and you try to bring that ball down, you're going to have Ebelair, Cook, and Olden all over the basketball. And that's what happened. They throw the ball in the backcourt and another turnover for Lanfear. 2.50 to go. 46-26. The Railer lead is 20 over the number one team in the state. Inbound for the Railers. They get it to Gavin. Gavin on the right side to Joey Olden. Yeah. So long. Oh, and Ebelair threw it to Gavin, and Gavin wasn't yeah. there, so a turnover by the Raiders. Oh, yeah, but, but again, you know, you don't want a turnover, but, man, as well as they've handled the ball so far, um, you know, you, you're, I think you're okay with it. Of course, Coach wants uh, some sort of perfection, uh, but you're, it's tough to do against these guys. 2.40 left in our third quarter, along with Josh Connick, Jeff Benjamin with you. Thanks for joining us here as the Railers lead by 20 later stages of the third quarter. Lanfear into the front court. Thames with another long three. Back rim, no good. 
High for the rebound, tipped around, comes down to Gavin Block. Yeah, and you got to watch Austin in the last couple possessions. He's really looked to uh, to cheat out and reach and, and try and get steals to get something going for his uh, for his Lions. Joey down the lane, Bobby's three from the corner. Spun out, no good, rebound down to Bishop. Bishop ahead to Austin with a nice catch. Nice athletic stop, and he got it to go down, count it, and he is fouled. That's going to be a foul on Bobby. I'll tell you what, give Austin credit. The way he caught it and then had to stop, nice play by Austin. Oh, there's no question. He's a great athlete. I mean, he's he's going to cause some problems for teams in the SEC. Uh, a flat-out great athlete. Uh, I, I think what happens uh, when he plays against the zone, and I won't speak too much on it because we may see these guys again, but he struggles with it because he doesn't shoot the ball from the perimeter real well. Austin, three, or the free throw no good. So the Railers hang on to that 18-point advantage. Austin with only six points tonight and is 0 for 3 from the free throw line. Under two minutes to go, Railers up 18. Yeah, it looks like Lanford going to uh, maybe a matchup zone here. Real tough to do that against the Railers with as many weapons as they have. Swing it around over to Gavin, a little stutter step. Railers work it great around the perimeter. Max is going to drive in. Nice screen from Bobby. Couldn't get it to go down. Rebound down to Wallace again. Yeah, another layup. The Railers have got to uh, got to convert. Max did a good job of getting there on the baseline. Austin, top of the key. Hands over to Trivet. In the lane to Wallace. Takes it down. The little finger roll. No good. Tipped out into the hands of Cook. Max working against Austin. Gavin for three. You wouldn't go down. There was a miss some opportunities here as we're under a minute and a half in the third. Alexander and the foul is going to be whistled out high. Yeah, we've kind of gone away from getting to the rim. I know Max went that last time, but uh, Gavin, Gavin there settled for that three. I thought Bowlby had one in the corner. He could have pumped fake on and went to the basket. So uh, don't quit doing what, uh, what's been working for you and attacking that rim. Foul out uh, high was on Joey. That's his second 107 to go in the third. It is Lincoln, 46, Lanfear, 28. Lanfear gets it into the front court. Bishop now, they work it around to Alexander, back on top to Trivet. Trivet tried to get it back out to Bishop, but Max stuck those arms out and took it away. Yeah, another turnover for, for Lanfear. That's eight, 18 on the night for the Lions. And now you hold for one if you can, if you're the Railers. Instead, Larry Austin tips it away. Lots of contact. Railers keep the possession, and a timeout taken by the Railers. Nice job by Coach Alexander saving that possession there. 42 seconds to go this in the third quarter. You're winning time now, and if you can get to the basket and, and ice this thing with easy scores, boy, it'd be a lot easier. Peyton Ebelair inbounds, gets it to Max Chuck right in front of the Railer bench. 40 seconds to go. Let's see what the Railers drew up here as we head toward the end of the third. Handle the ball. They're turning up the defense, and they're really starting to uh, play that Lanfear defense where they're where they're anticipating passing lanes, and they're going for any type of uh, any type of reach that they can get their hand on. Each team with only three team fouls in the second half hasn't been called quite as closely as it was in the first half, especially the first quarter. We're down to 10 seconds. Max waiting, waiting. Gets a screen from Bobby. Down to seven. Dumps it over in the corner. Ebelair corner, three, too long. Right for the rebound, comes down to Lanfear. Down to two, to one. Alexander to Austin. Yeah, no it's good. not going to count. It would not have counted had it gone anyway. End of three. It is Lincoln, 46. Lanfear, 28. Uh, you don't have to extend this thing to 25, which would be really tough, but you just got to keep where you were at halftime, and, and we actually extended that just a little bit. So good job by the Railers. Uh, I, I thought defensively we were as scrappy as we were when we started the game. And, um, and we just didn't quite go to the basket a little, as, as much as we were. Ball tipped away, stolen by Bishop, and then taken right back by the Railers. Max in the backcourt, lots of contact. Ball bounced down to the corner to Bowlby. Bowlby back out to Ebelair. Ebelair's had some really good minutes tonight for the Railers. Well, he can keep up speed-wise. Uh, maybe, maybe one of our quickest guys on the team is, is Ebelair. He handles the ball well. He's got very good feet. Ebelair hands to Gavin. Gavin down the lane. Lost it going up into the hands of Wallace. Back to Larry Austin. Austin coming back this way. Austin with a nice move. The layup is good. Yeah, look for Austin to take over, too. We just talked about it. He's going to, uh, he is going to uh, go for the steals. Anything he can do to cheat and try and get an easy basket to get his team back in it. 46-30, down to 16. Ebelair. Railers run a little weave out of the top of the key. Cook, block, ball tipped around, and a foul is going to be whistled. And that's going to go on Austin. 
Larry Austin picks up his third foul, and uh, you can tell by his reaction, he didn't think he got him. No, no, and the Railers are going to have to be strong, especially Gavin here. Uh, Austin's guarding him, so he's got to be strong with the ball. Uh, again, you don't have to try and emulate his speed because he can't. You just got to be, uh, you just got to be smart with what you're doing. And coach, and the official who's handed it in said, "We're going to go." So they hand it in to Gavin. Gavin working against Austin again. An undefeated season on the line here for Springfield Landfear. They came in 25 and 0. The lane opens right up. Max Kerr goes in, wouldn't get the layup to go. And then the ball saved inbounds. Nice play by Landfear. Railers again miss an opportunity. Bishop down the lane, hands to Wallace, who lays it up and in. Yeah, Railers, uh, Max again getting to the hoop. Missing that, uh, missing that layup. And here comes Landfear with a little momentum now, 46-32. They've scored six in a row. Railers need some points here. 6.20 to go, Railers up by 14. Max tries to go back cut, nobody there for the Railers. Lanter coming this way, Bishop pushes off a little bit on Horsham, and a foul's gonna be whistled on Tyler. That'll be the first on Horsham. Bishop forced the issue as he drew the contact from a Tyler, and uh, 6.12 to go, 46-32, and uh, this is where you find out that you are playing the number one team in the state. Yeah, and I think this might be a good time for Coach Al to get a timeout to uh, settle his guys down, get him a little break here, and uh, get them refocused because Lanphier's made their run here, and uh, the Railers have uh, yet to respond. Wallace, Milliken in the corner to Alexander. He stumbles a little bit, ball loose on the floor, alternating possession, it stays with Lanphier. I thought they got it to start the fourth. We got it to start the fourth. Okay. Yep. But that's also good important now because the next one is ours. It'll be ours. 6.04 to go, 46-32. Lob play into Wallace, brings it out top of the key, hands to Bishop, Joey comes out on him. Right wing to Rose. Austin, and he's gonna be called four steps. Great defense by Bowlby. Josh Austin was gonna fire a three. Bowlby came out on it. Austin was already in launch position, and when he came back down, he was called for steps. Well, a little surprising too. He's the guy that goes to the hoop and doesn't shoot, uh, doesn't shoot many threes, and that time Bowlby did a good job to, to come out and contest. Max, picked up his dribble, needs some help, needs a teammate to come to him, a timeout taken. Coach Alexander standing right there, they take the time. 5.42 to go in this one, 46.32, Railers up, this lead stretched out, and uh, you talk about it, this is winning time, we're going to see what the Railers can do here well, in the last 5.40. Max has got to the basket a couple times, unable to knock the layup down, but you can't back away from that, he's got to continue to go, um, or, uh, or we're not going to have uh, near as the success as far as offensively. So Max has got to continue to go to the hoop. The Railers got to continue to go to the hoop and, and we need a big score here. Railers with the ball inbounds after the timeout. Gavin on the right wing working against Austin. Gavin's picked up his dribble, needs some help. Bounces back out to Joey, top of the key. Railers a reset with Max. Joey, strong move. Contact, no call. Joey gets the rebound, puts it back out to Max. Over to Tyler and it's thrown away. Another turnover by the Railers. E. Blair will check back in. Or he's trying to check back in. He will replace Horsham. Five seventeen to go. Landfear can cut as close as they've been in a long time with some points this time down. Landfear into the front court. Bishop. Five minutes to go. Railers up by 14, Rose. Drive down the lane, contact, uh, won't go. Wallace with the rebound, that won't go. And we've got a foul, I think, on Gavin as Wallace tried to go up for the uh, putback. And uh, oh, they're gonna get Ebel out on the foul. That'll be his first, fifth on the team. And again, Josh, the boards are killing us, yeah. especially with number 20, Scotty Wallace. Yeah, they've really started to go to the hole hard and, and then they're missing and, and the Railers are not, uh, not rebounding, so. Uh, we've got to uh, we've got to sear up the defense. Down the lane, Rose kicks it over, hands to Austin. Austin in the lane, contact, offensive foul. 
Gavin Block got in the way. Larry Austin picks up the offensive foul. Yeah, and important for that, that's four. I don't think there's any question about that. Uh, Austin flat just put his shoulder into Gavin, and Gavin took the toll right in the stomach. Uh, that, was, uh, that was a pretty easy call, I thought. Although I will say, Gavin's really good at taking the charge. Gavin's also good at drawing the attention to make sure they That's see. That's what happens. That's what happens. You, I, uh, you know, I, I used to love to take charges, right. and, and you'd yell as loud as you could yell just to give that ref a little more thinking you got hit uh, a little harder than you really did. So after the uh, fourth foul by Austin, Railers into the front court need to have a good look offensively this time down. Yeah, we've had probably four or five possessions now where we have not gotten a good look at the basket. Gavin down the lane, opens up, contact, won't go down, but Gavin will go and be going back to the line, shooting two. Yeah, again, Gavin uh, doing a great job of getting to the board, or getting to the rim. Uh, he got body blocked, and then another guy, Wallace, tried to come over and block his shot, but Gavin's going to go to the free throw line uh, for what, some of the, the first points of the fourth, I think, for, for the Railers, right? Have not scored yet. Gavin with 23, make it 24. Yeah, and Gavin's got to be in, in tip-top condition here uh, going against Austin, and uh, a lot of people don't understand how how tough that is, a guy hanging on you that's uh, uh, is quicker than you, uh, just as strong or maybe stronger, and uh, he's battled him like crazy all night long, so good job by the juniors. Got to use his legs here on these free throws. Second one good. 48-32, Railer lead back to 16. Gavin with 25, 4.20 to go in the contest. Austin throws over to Bishop. Again, Austin playing with four fouls in contact. Either Evil Air or Joey's going to get that one. Yeah, Railer's got to play head up on him and expect penetration. Uh, Austin's not a shooter from the outside, and he's going to try and make something happen for these Lions. Peyton picks up his second 16 foul. Looking to inbound, they do to Bishop near the timeline. Bishop with the catch now over to Alexander. Bishop looks to make some move and clear some space to fire a three. Tries to dump it down to Wallace and it's taken away. Another steal by the Railers and again, Bishop not being real confident taking the three, but the Railer defense had some stuff to do with that. Yeah, Mr. Statistician Andy Fitz has got them for 22 turnovers now and Something that's really, really hurt the Lions, in the, in especially in the second half. 48-32, Railers advantages 16. Ebler to Cook, back out to Gavin. Back out to Joey at the timeline. Three and a half to go, almost taken away. Ball loose on the floor. Joey's picked it up, needs some help, and a timeout taken by the Railers as Joey was Good hustle, laying Joey. in the backcourt. And the, yeah. uh, you can tell the Lanfear fans are wanting uh, over and back, but it was tipped yeah. over by Lanfear. Joey... So Ebelair will inbound right in front of the scorer's bench. Ebelair, the back door to Joey. The layup is good. good. Great play out of the timeout. Coach Al has ran that play for years. It was uh, it was there when I was there, and uh, it worked to perfection that time on a great back door layup. And now Gavin blocked with the steal. Gavin with the steal. Gavin hands to Joey to Cook underneath. Gavin open. Count it. Fifty-two, thirty-two. Yeah. And Gavin with another steal. Gavin another steal, and then a blocking foul is going to be whistled on the land here. Roy S. Anderson has come to its feet and come unglued. Well, what a what a timeout one for Coach with the scramble by Joey, and then this leads to uh, what eight? Uh, no, six four, six unanswered for the Railers, and now the Railer crowd is going crazy. Everybody's on their feet. 2.56 left here in the game as the Railers extend this thing to 20 points. And it's Gavin Block going back to the line. He's got 27 on the night. Yep, this will tie his career high if he makes this one. A little shrug of the does. shoulders and a drop in. And this for a new career high. 2.56 to go. Gavin with 28. 29. 54-32. 2.50 to go. Bishop a three. 
Shot up an air ball, tracked down by Bowlby. Cook to Evelair. Ahead to Gavin. Gavin's heading to the basket. Contact. And Gavin will go back to the line, shooting two. And Gavin will try for 30. Well, I'll tell you what, Jeff. Gavin, 12 of 14 from the free throw line right now. And uh, that, that's a guy that's been going to the hole, and he's paid a price. Uh, but you see the fruits of that, that hard drive because uh, he's going for 15 and 16 free throws on the night. Gavin, free throw on the way, missed it. Well, you remember it was a uh, last game of a season I think we had here uh, one year against Lanphier where uh, Jordan Nelson had a parade going up to the uh, free throw line, and uh, he scored 48. Of course, we've also had some uh, heart-stopping season enders uh, a few years ago when Nathaniel Smith made that layup against Southeast that we thought was yeah, going to win it. You're right. And then LT came down and hit the free throw. So, uh, yeah, Raylor seemed to come up very, very big in the season finales. Larry Austin down the lane, no good, and Bobby grabs the rebound. How many's Austin got tonight, Jeff? Eight. Eight points. What a job by the Raylor defense. 32 points given up so far by the Raylers. But you know, Josh, it's hard to score sitting on the bench. Evelair down the lane wouldn't go down. Bobby tried to grab the rebound, and they're going to say last touch by the Raylers. But again, Austin has spent an unusual amount of time on the bench, and yeah. it's hard to score from there. I know, that's where I was in high school. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, it, it, it's, you know, I, I don't know if tired or what, but, uh, you know, you don't see the Raylers um, guys coming off. I'm telling you, you know, Max wouldn't have been off if he wouldn't have been in foul trouble, and, and Gavin uh, has been out there for the duration. So, um, you know, it, yeah, you're right. It's uh, It's been a tough night for the Lions. They haven't had it going all night. But credit the Railers with uh, some really, really stingy defense. 24 turnovers for Lanfear. Bishop free throw is good. He has eight. Bishop's just got eight points on just one free throw. Or, I'm think, sorry, one three-pointer. And I think that's the key. Austin and Bishop each had 15 down at Lobernica. And right now, they've combined, if he makes this, they've combined for 17 points. Yeah, there's no question. They're, they're the two guys that make the Lions go. Uh, you you got to stop. You can stop them. And, Danofsky, and, uh, little way up off the glass. That won't go down. Seniors trying to get on the board. Patton cutting down the lane. That's no good. Rebound. Danofsky grabs it, and he's fouled, and he'll go to the line with a chance to score on uh, some free throws. 40 seconds to go. Raylor lead is at 23. All what those a who, night. All those who saw this coming, raise your hand. <laughs> No, no, I, you know, you you look back at the game, and obviously Lanfear didn't have their best game, but uh, give a lot of credit to, to the Railer. I mean, we, we were sitting here talking about it now for the last couple minutes, but uh, if you were here to see it, our, our guys were flat moving everywhere, and uh, it, it was tough for the Lions to uh, even get a breath, let alone get open for a shot. 47, or 57, 34, 40 seconds to go. Donofsky, the second one, missed the first one. And rolls off no good. And we tick down to 30 seconds. Patton. Three on the way, left an air ball, and that will fall short, and the Railers will get it. And with 24 seconds to go, Springfield Lanfear is going to leave Lincoln with something they didn't have when they came to town, a loss. Yeah, that'll be uh, be nice to be the Raiders and uh, <laughs> get these guys going. A standing ovation here from the uh, Raylor faithful on a great night here at Roy S. Anderson. That's going to do it.
34. Joined now by Lincoln coach Neil Alexander. And coach, uh, wow, I, I don't know if there's anything else you can say except, wow, the turnout, the performance, just uh, a great way to end the regular season here at home. Railers get a share of the conference championship. You know, that we played an outstanding basketball game. Our kids were ready to play. Um, we played a great team. Uh, Lampier is a great team, and we might play them the 10 times, and we may not win another one, but tonight was our night. Uh, they're very, very athletic, very good. Offensive boards, they crash. Uh, they're, they're very quick defensively. And it's like we kind of got soft there in the third or fourth quarter, and we, we couldn't get to the paint to what we were doing the first half. So, But I'm proud of our kids. They've had an outstanding year. The year's over. Uh, now we all got to start from scratch. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of people out there that would really like to thump us, so, including Lamp here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right, Coach. Uh, I thought the guys responded several times where Lamp here, you know, we talked about early, we talked about the last game of making – Teams are going to make good teams are going to make 6-0 runs, 8-0 runs. They did that early in the third, and our guys responded with an, about another 6-0 run or 8-0 run, and and a lot of that was due to uh, getting to the basket, and, and they were pressuring us out so far. Uh, we got to the basket and were able to make a lot of layups and make a lot of nice passes for other guys making layups. Yeah, and we also missed some layups, yeah. which uh, would have taken a little bit more of the suspense out of the game earlier. And uh, but that was our game plan. You got to attack the basket. You can't just play on the perimeter when they're pressuring you like they did. And you know, I, I thought all our kids played outstanding. Uh, they were very, very good. Um, Offensively, defensively, we, we've still got to work on the dribble drive. Uh, they've done a lot of penetrating and, and create a lot of foul situations for us. Yeah, but uh, you, Coach, you gave up 30, what is it, 34 points tonight to a team that's probably averaging close to 70, I'm assuming. I don't know the exact stat, but uh, all in all, when those guys, even if they did penetrate or a big guy brought the ball down, we had at least feisty piranha railers all over them. And I don't know how many steals, 22 turnovers for for 24 turnovers for Lanfear now tonight, and that's uh, that's a credit to your defense. Well, you know, but we also, I, I still want, you know, to stop the dribble drive. We got into foul trouble because of the dribble drive, and we also allowed them to get probably 15 offensive rebounds. And, uh, you know, you don't win a lot of basketball games when you get uh, 15, uh, uh, give up 15 offensive boards. So, you know, we got a couple areas that we got to take care of, but, we take and we know and understand that our defense is going to give up rebounds. We just hope that we can force a lot of turnovers to overcome the amount of, of uh, offensive boards that we do give up. Coach, you talk about the uh, foul trouble that the team got into in the first quarter. Um, talk about the uh, the play of Peyton Ebelair, Adam Conradi, Austin Cruz came in. And when your bench players came in, the lead actually increased when you had your starters on the on the bench uh, due to the foul trouble. Yeah, you know, I mean, we had four or five of them with two there in the first half, and, you know, we got away with putting Max back in for a couple possessions, and, you know, it was, uh, it, it, it hurts us. It breaks our momentum of what we're doing and things, and, and uh, you know, we done it tonight where I think Edwards scored two points, and I don't think Horsham scored at all. And, you know, those are two important parts of our offense, and we still had a nice night of, uh, you know, scoring, what, 57, 58 points and uh, doing a, a pretty good job offensively. But, again, I'm really proud of them. I hope there's a lot of people in that cafeteria uh, eating some sandwiches and uh, uh, doing some things with the kids in there, getting their autographs, because uh, it's been a fun group. Uh, uh, now then, if it just run about another three weeks, it'd be uh, even if it ends Monday or Tuesday. Tuesday, um, it's been a great group of kids. Yeah, they are, Coach. Uh, played so hard again uh, tonight. Was there anything extra that you had to tell the guys uh, coming into a game like this? Anything extra that you prepared for? It didn't look like you changed much, and it didn't look like Lanfrey was going to change much. But why would you at 25 and 0 and and 27 and 2? Yeah, you know, and we took and. Uh, I, th I thought our kids done a nice job. We, the only thing we didn't was a dribble drive. We, I thought we did for a couple of uh, possessions there, second or in the third and fourth quarter, where we kind of backed off them a little bit. But hey, that savior is one quick thing, and uh, 
he's a, a hard one to guard because you get up on him, he's going to go around. You you back off of him, and he's going to shoot from 40. And and I mean 40 feet. Uh, yeah. he, he, he's got outstanding range and uh, is really, really a, a good player. And then you got Larry. Um, can't say enough about him. Uh, um, but our guy's done a nice job, and, you know, I, I, I'm really proud of him. And, Coach, now you, you mentioned it. Uh, you get up in the morning, and, and everybody's even. Uh, you look ahead to uh, Tuesday night uh, regional action. You'll take on either Mount Zion or uh, Decatur Eisenhower. Uh, and the crowd you had here tonight, sure be nice to see him again on Tuesday night as uh, the Railers are lucky enough to host the regional this year. Well, our regional's a tough one. Um, I mean, uh, you got normal U High, who's, uh, you know, I think they're ranked, what, five, four, right up there at the top, and they've got great players, and they got different types of players. But uh, if our guys come out and play and are hungry, and uh, I feel pretty good about the way our guys are playing. All right, Coach. Yeah, you're, you're yep. exactly right. So uh, congratulations again on uh, sharing the conference championship, and uh, hopefully it's the first of a few more championships we can talk about as we go a week at a time here at the end of the season and uh, Railers get the win here tonight. Well, thank you and thank you fans. Uh, you were outstanding and our student body, I can't say enough about them. Uh, they had two sections filled and hopefully they'll uh, want to do that again here next week at our place and hopefully the fans will come out and support and, and do the things that uh, will, will make us uh, successful next week. All right, Coach, congratulations, and we'll see you back here Tuesday night against either Mount Zion or Decatur Eisenhower. Well, thank you. Railers Thanks, everyone. Railers with the win, and we'll be back to wrap things up here in a moment. You're listening to Lincoln Railer Basketball.